Hey, close up. Hello? Over here. Hi there. What? Never seen a talking mannequin before? Oh. Really? Never? Doctor Who? The Fukons? Nothing? What are you talking about? I've been here for years, watching students do their lighting projects. I'm tired of watching you kids make the same mistakes over and over again. No more! I'm gonna teach you how to do it right the first time. Oh, okay, great. First things first, get your ass down here. You skip the most important step, finding your angles. First thing you gotta do is plan your lighting by drawing a diagram of the scene you're lighting for. Step over to the subject area you're lighting, then facing the camera you're lighting for, move your arms 45 degrees to the left and 45 degrees to the right. Great job. That's your horizontal angle. Next, move your arm all the way up the lighting. You want your light sitting 45 degrees up. No higher, no lower. There you go, buckaroo. Now you're ready to place your lights on the grid. Well, almost. First, you gotta pick up the right lights for the job. Here at BTC, and probably wherever you go in your career, the studio has several different types of lights. Picking the wrong light for the job could ruin you before you even start. So pay close attention. Furnels, named after the guy who invented it, are the most versatile of any of the lights you can use. You'll use them to light your main subject with your key, fill, and backlight. Scoops are called scoops because they, uh, scoop all the light that you point them at. Boy them at a camera, and they'll flare up your shot worse than the sun. So use them carefully. They work well for, uh, backdrops, backgrounds, things that need lots of light across a wide area. Broads have hard, defined edges, like my ex-girlfriend. Broads are used for flat backdrops, and props are objects you want to lay on a set. So, since you're working on your key light, which one would you pick? That's right. You win a one-way ticket to... My heart! Whatever light you go with, just make sure they're all the same wattage and placed at the same distance from your subject. All right. Now we need to start placing these lights in the right areas. Move the ladder over to the light you want to move. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Be careful moving that ladder. You could hit something important. That's better. Make sure the light is off and cool before you touch it. Those things burn! Unplug the light. Grab the wrench. Don't forget the safety rope. Loosen the C-clamp. And make sure no one's under you while messing with those lights. If something broke and fell, you could kill a guy. <laughs> Seriously. When the C-clamp is loose enough to pull off the light, Undo the safety chain while holding on to the C-clamp. The safety chain is always the last thing you take off. Now, carry it down to the floor. Carefully. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, to put it back up, do the same thing, but backwards. Remember, safety chain goes off last and on first. Oh! 
Amazing! Now that you've placed the light in the right spot, it's time to focus. Not that kind of focus. Focus the light. Okay. Focusing light is when you aim and concentrate the lamp so that it evenly lights your subject. And nothing else. If you get this wrong, your lighting will never look right, no matter how hard you try. So, pay attention. First, turn on the lighting board. Then, put up the light you want. Slowly, or you can pop a bulb. Next, open up the barn doors, then spot the light. Good grief, you're gonna give me an aneurysm, kid. Okay, the inside of the light, or lamp, has a reflector and a bulb that you can move closer to and further away from the lens. Moving the bulb and the reflector further away from the lens makes the beam narrow and more intense. This is called spotting, because you're making the light act like a spotlight. And I know you know what a spotlight is. I bet you do. So anyways, moving the bulb and the reflector closer to the lens makes the beam less intense, more spread out, and more evenly dispersed. This is called flooding, because it's like you're flooding the whole studio with light. So again, spot the light. Now that you've got a narrow light beam, use that to aim the center of your light onto your subject. Me. Then, once it's aimed, flood the light. This will give me a nice even coat of light. Fantastic. Now, adjust the barn doors so your subject is the only thing being lit. This is called sculpting. You're sculpting light. Look at you go. You're a sculptor. Congratulations. You focused your very first light. <laughs> I'm so proud. Now, you get to do it again. And again. And again. And again. First with the backlights. You want them directly behind the camera to get my beautiful outline. Then the key, which you've already done. Then the fill. Then the background lights. Mostly those will be scoops. You can also grab some gels to put on the scoops from the lighting cabinet to spice up the background. Congrats, kid. You did it! I'm ready to host the new show that I put on for all my imaginary friends. <laughs> it gets lonely here at night. Oh, and uh, be sure to keep track of everything on your lighting usage chart. Otherwise, if you die in a horrible freak accident, whoever takes over will have to start from scratch. What? Too much? Wait, wait, wait. Don't leave me here. I thought we were friends. Okay, well, at least leave the lights on so I can. Oh, come on! Someone please just let me die.